Mr. Theresa May has told MPs it is their national duty to pass a Brexit deal, saying it's the only way to avoid having to hold European elections next month, after marathon talks among EU leaders ended late last night with an agreement to delay the entire process until Halloween. But will Mrs May be in charge by then? She's brushed off yet more pressures to step down as one senior backbencher accused her of abject surrender to the EU. Our political editor Gary Gibbon is with me. Um, Gary, given that she's had three years so far to do not a great deal, um, well, not a great deal as far as MPs are concerned, can she really make use of six months? What she was saying in the House Commons is that she wants MPs to focus on the front end of this extension, to intensify the efforts and up the pace after the Easter break and work harder on getting compromises that can get Brexit over the line. Um, she is, I think, hoping there that the European elections moment uh, will be the one that they focus on and that they won't want to go near it. Actually, what you find is that an awful lot of MPs, very gloomy about the idea of running European elections, but slightly resigned to it. So I, I think the fact that the time pressure, the deadline has moved so far away, six months, actually makes it really hard to intensify the pressure in there. As you were suggesting, a lot of MPs trying to work out this six months thing, does it help her secure her position? An awful lot of Tories trying to work out wheezes where they can somehow change the rules and get rid of her. But maybe it does uh, mean that she's there uh, for a bit longer. Does it make it harder to uh, get a second referendum in that time span? I think supporters of a second referendum, some of them I've spoken to today, think it does. One of the other things, of course, Theresa May emphasising in there today was there's an Easter break coming up, a holiday. Why don't you go away, refresh yourself, come back ready for compromise? I have to say I've watched a lot of recesses here and quite often MPs go back and talk to people who think exactly like them and get come back even more dug in. I don't think she should bank on that working. On the talks with Labour, they've resumed uh, again today, face-to-face -face talks with Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn. But one of the people in the shadow cabinet I was talking to today, who's actually got some hopes pinned on, on these talks, said Labour feels that they're negotiating at best with about a third of the cabinet, and the other two thirds are at best sitting on their hands, if not plotting to undermine the entire project. One other thing you need to remember with these extensions, these delays to the date of Brexit, Every time you do a delay, you reduce the amount of time there is in the so-called implementation period to negotiate the next uh, relationship. Now, that increases the chances that you end up in the backstop. Now, of course, to some people that is a, a, a wonderful guarantee, a reassurance, but to some people, particularly in there, who are digging their heels in, some Tories, the DUP, it is the devil's own work. So. Another problem for uh, Theresa May, uh, just as you'd think her worries couldn't pile up anymore. Since the public voted for Brexit, summer has turned to autumn. Another spring gone, another winter. And now spring will turn to summer and October is the new Brexit date. Theresa May left Brussels in the early hours of the morning, having secured another delay to Brexit knowing it would anger those back in Westminster who most want it and think she has mishandled it. Does my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, appreciate the anger that her abject surrender last night has generated across the country? Will she resign? I think you know the answer to that. They do know her answer, but some of her critics in her party aren't giving up. Theresa May said all MPs should rest over Easter and come back ready to compromise at speed. I never wanted to seek this extension and I deeply regret that we have not yet been able to secure agreement in this House for a deal that would allow us to leave in a smooth and orderly way. I know too that this whole debate is putting members on all sides of the House under immense pressure and causing uncertainty across the country, and we need to resolve this. So let's use the opportunity of the recess to reflect on the decisions that will have to be made swiftly on our return after Easter. The Prime Minister resumed talks with Jeremy Corbyn this afternoon, promised votes on different options for MPs if those talks fail, signalled that the withdrawal bill would be voted on soon after the Easter break. The obstacles to compromise are still immense. This House must also bear in mind that after a deal has passed, the current Prime Minister said she will step down. 
We have no idea who may succeed her. So with that in mind, with that in mind, we have to entrench any agreement. He's worried Tories will rip up any agreement under a new harder line leader. Many are longing to put in place. Right now, the country does not want Mrs May, the party does not want Mrs May, the politicians don't want Mrs May, and frankly the Cabinet are now voting themselves or abstaining um, with regard to, uh, against uh, her proposals. And this timetable might work quite well for people of your opinion, because you think you could have, say, Boris Johnson or Dominic Raab in running the, running the Conservative Party, running the government, and potentially threatening Europe with no deal. That would certainly be my hope, yes. So would I urge the Prime Minister to ignore the bullies on our back benches and stick to your guns? Well, can I thank my honourable friend for uh, her intervention? And can I the delay you? Theresa May came back with last night was neither the very short extension President Macron was pushing for, nor the much longer, year-long one some had talked of, and which supporters of a second referendum thought might work to their advantage. You'd have rather March, wouldn't you? That would, would have been better. Of course, I would rather have had a much longer extension and not be under the pressure of time again. This makes it tougher for you? It does make it tougher for us, but it's far, far preferable to actually the prospect of crashing out tomorrow with no deal at all and the impact that would have had crashing into people's real lives. Frankly, the worst of all worlds. I mean, it's not long enough that it really gives us a huge amount of time to rethink the whole strategy. It's not short enough to really concentrate anyone's minds. But it's all they'd give her. And Theresa May insisted that Labour and the Tories were closer together in their talks than some realised. On a customs union, I think there is actually more agreement uh, in relation to a customs union than is often given credit for when the language, different language is used. The common ground might be easier to sell if Mrs May hadn't been denying it existed for so long. It might take more than an Easter break to bridge the gaps in policy and trust that run deep. Gary Gibbon reporting. Well, earlier I spoke to the Culture Secretary, Jeremy Wright, and I asked him what the Government and Labour Party are going to do now. We need to be able to compromise, both of us do, but I'm not going to predict now exactly the way in which that will happen. I get These are negotiations. No, no, no. I'm saying you we, compromised at all? I was very clear, Chris. I said we both need to, and we both need to move. But for me to predict now exactly what the outcome of those conversations will be, I can't do. Are the talks going on next week, or are you all going on holiday? I'm not involved in the talk, so I can't tell you exactly what the schedule will be. What I do know is that everybody is committed to getting through that process so that we know, can we resolve things, can we resolve things with a conversation between us and the Labour front bench? If we can, that's fantastic. If we can't, we then need to go on and talk to the Labour Party and to others about how we resolve things through a series of votes. That's the process, and that's what we're working through. And, and Theresa May's position as Prime Minister is now, what, secure? Well, insecure? Prime Minister couldn't have been clearer. As soon as this phase of the negotiations is over, she will leave office and someone else will take so over. only when there is a deal, but, as far as you're But concerned. I think it's worth saying, isn't it, that if there were to be a change of Prime Minister tomorrow, the new Prime Minister would face the same House of Commons, the same set of issues, the same positions that people have taken. So in the end, this comes down to the votes of every single one of the 650 members of this Parliament, not just the one who happens to be Prime Minister. And we need to get everybody to shift a little so that we can reach a, a consensus. I mean, it does sound like nothing has changed since last week, which suggests that what Donald Tusk's warning was about, don't waste this time, is not being listened to. Well, I mean, the time is just going to be frittered away, isn't it? By going on holiday, by not changing the approach or the leader, by not approaching, you know, by not announcing any change in the red lines. I, I think this idea that all work will pause for a week is, is wrong. What would help this process is for members of parliament to talk to people who are not other politicians. That would be a good idea. And perhaps next week we should all do some of that. That's certainly what I'll be doing. So well, let's see. We want these talks to be successful. I hope both sides want them to be successful. If they're not, we then need to move on and discuss how we resolve these things in a different way through a series of votes in this place. Because resolve them we must. The British people have given us a clear instruction that they want us to leave the European Union. Our job is to find a way of doing that, preferably with a deal, because I believe that would be the best way to do it. And that, I think, is what the public expect. If there is no deal by the summer, should the recess go ahead? Because you risk spending weeks of this 25, 26-week extension 
on holiday. We're, we're a long way off that point. But to be honest, what this doesn't need is an awful lot of extra time. If people are prepared to come to an agreement, we can do this reasonably swiftly. And that was Joey Mike, the Cultural Secretary, talking to Christian and there. Um, welcome back to Brussels. Now, here they want a holiday. They want a holiday from Brexit, quite frankly. And that's what they got last night. Six months of holiday from Brexit, while they can concentrate on all the stuff that they regard as being more important. The European parliamentary elections, uh, then choosing a new commissioner, head, head president of the commission, getting ready for the next EU budget. And uh, they were discussing all these things last night until about two in the morning, uh, after which Theresa May gave her press conference and Donald Tusk gave his. Now, here's what's really interesting. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, went into the meeting insisting, as he had never done before, that the result of the British referendum of 2016 needs to be respected. And I spoke to a high-level uh, EU source today, who told me the reason why he had done so is because they don't want to be seen to be associated with a mistake that the French government made in 2005 when there was a referendum on the European Constitution where they voted no, and then the parliament, the French parliament, overturned that a few years later. That prepared the ground for Marine Le Pen to do so well in the polls. They don't want to be associated with that uh, as they prepare for their own European parliamentary elections. So that was a really interesting message sent from the French, and frankly... Uh, it doesn't bode very well for those in Britain who are still hoping for that second referendum. Uh, but anyway, there are lots of other stuff going on here today in Brussels. Here is how the day panned out. They're not scared of a Halloween Brexit in Brussels. They've been in the gargoyle business for centuries, but they are getting impatient with the distraction of our departure. And in the dead of night, surrounded by the ghosts of summits past, after talks inside the space-aged egg of the European Council, its president, Donald Tusk, told Britain to get on with it, whatever it might be. This extension is as flexible as I expected and a little bit shorter than I expected, but it's still enough to find the best possible solution. Please do not waste this time. By morning, it began to sink in that the UK will now participate in EU parliamentary elections, barring some miracle in the Commons. So what did the President of the European Parliament make of that? It's important to decide. We need a decision in the UK and we need a decision here. But first of all, for us, it's important to respect the European Parliament. This is not an hotel, this is not a taxi. After the decision, we will change. We will have British members of this Parliament if there are elections in the UK. But after the Brexit, they will leave the European Parliament. But do you relish the prospect of having many more Nigel Farages potentially in the European Parliament it's creating trouble? Problem. I am the they said they would create havoc. The, pro the problem is not how many Conservative, how many Labour, how many Farage parties. The, the democracy is democracy. The, 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 the election is in the end of the British citizens, not my hand. I, I, I will vote for me. Yes, there are going to be national populists selected uh, in the United Kingdom, but there will be Greens, there will be Scottish nationalists, Labourites, uh, Tories. Uh, you will have Remainers, you will have Brexiters selected. It so could be a dress rehearsal for another referendum. Exactly. And so I would take these elections as a first way to go back to the people. They call this part of the parliament the Vox Box, where just about every Vox is vexed by Brexit and what our slow motion exit means for you guessed it, the future of Europe. Peter Lundgren is a Sweden Democrat who was a lorry driver before he became an MEP. I think it will be a massive support for Farage. If they don't deliver the Brexit as promised, and if you go into a second referendum, I think they will see Farage back in the building with a lot of MEPs with him. I am sure of that. So when President Macron talks about a renaissance of Europe, mm. Well, President Macron, he has his hands full at home, I would say. Uh, if you look at what happened, he promised everything to everyone. Then he found out it's not that easy to deliver that. And now he has a massive riot all over France to deal with. So sorry, Mr. Macron, we don't want that mess here in the rest of Europe. 
In Brussels, at least, the Brexit delay allows normal life to reassert itself for a summer of other distractions. Well, earlier I spoke to the MP Anna Subri of the independent group, or TIG, which is currently trying to register as a political party called Change UK in time for potential European elections here. I asked her what she makes of what's going on now. It's bizarre, isn't it? It's like nothing's happened. And it's like this huge humiliation for Theresa May and our country has not happened. And I think the problem is, is that she has the most remarkable... It's not resilience. I just think she has the most astonishing tin ears. And her stubbornness, which verges obviously on obstinacy, is deeply unattractive. So we have this extension until October. But what we also know for sure is that there is a clear plan that the government has somehow to beat people into submission so that we don't have the European elections. In other words, that she somehow gets her withdrawal agreement through Parliament How? before May the 22nd. I don't know. I just think she thinks if she just keeps picking away at it, gnawing away, people will collapse. I don't see that happening. The DUP don't seem to be in any mood to compromise and agree to her withdrawal agreement because there's no compromise there at all. That is absolutely on the table, will not change. And the members of the ERG who have voted steadfastly against her deal don't seem to set to, seem set to change their minds either. So she seems now to be saying, let's bring the withdrawal agreement back or the withdrawal bill rather, let's bring that in and try and slip this all the way through the back door. That's not going to work either, because it's clear in law she has to have the meaningful vote, even if she was to persuade people to vote for her withdrawal bill. Do you think won't, what's happening here in this House is stoking anger in the country? No, I think people are fed up to the back teeth with it. I think also what's happening is that there's, a, that there's an entrenchment from the hard levers and from a large group of people who voted Remain, many of whom have been completely accepting of the referendum result, who are now getting cross as they see what is happening to our country, and for many of them now seeing that really and truthfully we need to have that people's vote. Are you a TIG or are you Change UK? I mean, why aren't you a party yet? What's the delay? Because we haven't been able to get the Electoral Commission to give us the thumbs up to register. Why does it take so long? It's just the way that it is. It's nothing to do with us. It takes time to do these things. We put our application in. Well, we had the conversation with the Electoral Commission as soon as we possibly could. So, I, and I use the expression TIGs because I, I kind of like it. And I don't, I don't like change UK I think it's really important because it's about what we are but I kind of like Tiggs and Tiggers as well. Right but is there any danger that you won't be a party by the European elections though and then what happens? Well I think we would have to be a party actually by the close of nominations which is on depending where you live around about April the 24th so that's a very important thing for us and of course we're doing everything we can to make sure that the Electoral Commission agrees to our application and then we're really up and running. And if not what happens? Well, if they don't register us as a party, they don't register us as a party.